Hello, welcome to Voices for Justice. My name is Sharon Rekusen. The focus of this show is to give voice to all the social, economic, and environmental justice work that's being done in the Upper Valley, Vermont, and New Hampshire, and to highlight how each issue is connected to the other. Ultimately, I'd like to promote the need to work together for the common good, for our human rights, and for the planet. At the end of each episode, there will be some contact information and I urge you to get involved. Enjoy the show. And with me is Bev McKinley from The Silent Warriors, and a homelessness, um, a one-person homelessness um, project. <laughs> and um, we are continuing a discussion we had about the Lebanon City Council ordinance. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But the ordinance, the next ordinance meeting is December 7th in the City Hall in Lebanon or the Lebanon Opera House uh, at 7 p.m. And so welcome again, Bev, uh, to the show. Um, Let's talk a lot and deeply about homelessness. Um, I looked at your home, your, your website, and um, although it's out of date mm -hmm. uh, because you use Facebook, Correct. and by the way, we're going to post that information at the end of the show, um, you say something that's very poignant. The homelessness are all around us. They ride the buses with us. They shop where we shop. Um, yet they're invisible. Like, and so why don't you talk a little bit about that? Um, you know, you can, um, if they had a name tag, um, you'd see them in Walmart, you'd see them in the grocery store, you'd see them, you know, at the drugstore. Um, you would see them everywhere if they wore a name tag. They, um, they dress like we dress. Um, Sometimes they dress better than the average person because they've gotten a good deal at Listen or Sevka um, where people donate their clothes. And, you know, a lot of people make judgment on that, you know, um, if, they, if they are identif identified as a homeless person, a, a judgment is made, well, geez, they have an L.L. Bean jacket, you know, how'd they afford that? Well, they got it from Listen or they got it from Sevka. So judgment shouldn't be made. Um, so, and, and they also, um, if they have a car, you know, they may have been, you know, kicked out of their home for whatever reason, and they had a car before. So, therefore, they still have a car. Um, so, you know, um, some tend to be in 24-7 uh, factories, you know, they blend in there for a while until they get kicked out. Or like the hospital, they can blend in a parking lot like that. And so we don't see them. Um, in the summertime, they do tend to be on sides of the road, um, but with the, the ordinance coming through, um, there will be less of that. And um, I think it's important that the ordinance go through because that pushes a person into um, seeking um, alternatives of finding housing and, and getting them a roof over their head. You know, it, it um, and, and that is, you know, um, that is accessible. Um, we do have the services here. Um, it may not happen overnight, but we can find the services for them. Yeah, the, um, I read the ordinance and I made a note about it and it, it was very vague about the, the services, the social services. Um, it just, it said that people would be given like a, pa what seemed like, you know, a pamphlet with social services. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that, is that the way it's going to happen? Like here, here are your options. Um, will there actually be social workers or some real help to find housing? Um, you know, it, it has, has the simplicity of The Haven, Listen, Sevka, Silent Warriors, um, Hotlines, um, the listen dinners, um, food pantries and whatnot. Um, and therefore, you know, the person does need to take the initiative to make a call. 
once they've made the call, there are caseworkers that will work with that individual. Um, you know, you, you have to reach out somewhat in order to, you know, get some support. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing um, to reach out, you know. Um, however, we do acknowledge that there are those that just want to stay out and be by themselves and not be around other people, and therefore we, we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, how, how will people be, how will you know that someone's homeless? I mean, I know the Haven's very, is busy. I mean, I, I, I volunteer there and I, I see the activity there, and as the, as the nights get cold, the days and the nights get colder, there's the warming shelter right. and people have to come indoors or they will freeze. Yeah, as, as people come into the warming shelter or happen to access Tri-County um, Homeless Outreach or even listen, um, we become aware of their situation and therefore they get put um, on a list so that the um, task force that worked with everybody this summer will work with them and, and try to find solutions um, for some housing for them. So, um, you know, in fact, our, you know, our tax force work um, met today and, you know, we, we discussed some names that popped up in, in the area again and, you know, discussed, you know, um, can we give them this, direct them in this service, direct them in that service? And, and or did you hear about so-and-so that came back to the area? And, and or, you know, they, they were at the listen dinner you know, and so we, we have our eyes out there um, seeking out anybody that's new to the area. Will you be, will the task force remain in, um, in motion yes. for the future, the, yep. you know, into yep. the future? Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing task force. Um, we were able, you know, to, to use it to um, support all those, you know, um, most of them down at, um, at the encampment across from Hannaford's. And we've decided since it was so successful and um, it, it just um, worked so well, that is something that we're willing to all commit to and, and continue it and identify, like I said, identify any individual that um, the five organizations happen to come across. Um, another thing that I read on, the fa on, on your p website, which I completely agree with, um, is that we are all one paycheck away from a crisis. Um, many of us. Yes. And maybe not all. Uh, not the 1%, certainly. Right, right. <laughs> um, There's so many reasons a person becomes homeless, and you've been, you've actually put yourself in the position to get to know people, and you, and um, you mentioned to me you had a personal story. Would you like to sure um, share that with people? A couple of years ago, I had a young family, um, a, a young lady with um, a four-year-old daughter and her boyfriend. Um, this, it sort of had to do with finances. She was living with her mom, and her brother had been killed um, six months before um, in a violent act, and her mother... Um, didn't cope with it very well and so she had to be um, hospitalized and so they lost their home. Um, she had no other place to live and so I um, set them up with everything and my heart just broke. It was the end of August and you know we can have snow in September mm -hmm. and so I actually took things like a cooler off my my, you know, out of my storage and whatever else I could find to give to them, you know, a cook stove that I, you know, I had um, because I just, I, I couldn't envision um, them having to survive out there. Um, you know, the little girl was thrilled thinking they were camping, um, but um, it was just heart-wrenching, you know, for me to think um, they had no place to go. A lot of people um, you mentioned in the beginning, you know, that they, they had, might have a car because they had a mm -hmm. car before they lost their home. Right. They work. Right. Um, people work. Some people work. I have s someone in my own family that works two jobs. She's exhausted. Mm -hmm. And she has a house, 
but she really has no time to do anything right. but sleep right. after working two jobs. Um, it's well, it's it, it's it, expensive to live in the Upper Valley. That's, rents, that's right. you know, rents are highly um, expensive. Um, food's expensive. Gas is expensive. Um, Heat is expensive. Exactly, <laughs> you know, and um, you know. Um, heat increases long before the heating season starts and of course the electric rate has gone up as well this year so um, it makes a huge impact and each year that you know the utilities go up um, there's less and less fuel assistance and so it, it makes it very difficult right. on people and they you know they get behind on their rent and some landlords aren't favorable in you know letting things slide right. I understand that but um, and if you get sick yep. and you can't work right. and we don't have um, a national standard for uh, sick day, right. paid sick days, yep. we have lousy health care, <laughs> very costly and doesn't give you much um, insurance or yep. assurance that you're going to get any help. There's so many root causes right. for this. Um, I had, I had a, um, a, a, a guy that I went to school with who um, had three apartments and um, he, he um, uh, got sick, was in the hospital for a while and he wasn't able to work and he lost everything and he was homeless this spring. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, you know, he was a classmate. Yep. And this is what we call the social safety net right. that we don't have anymore. Right. So um, my own, you know, diatribe about the Republican, you know, and the political parties that people say, you know, pull yourself up from your bootstraps. That was George Bush's thing. It is sometimes it is not possible right. to do that. Right. And um, if you don't have yeah. a strong family support, right, um, then you have no hope. Right. Well, um, we've we've. Um, we're going to close. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that you'll come back on the show Certainly. and talk about how things are going this winter. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.